morning everyone, I hope you're well. My name is Ms. Sharina Balaratnam and I'm the Founder and Medical Director of my clinic, Aesthetics, here in the heart of Beaconsfield, Old Town. Good evening everyone, I hope you're keeping well. If you can see me out there, drop me a few hearts, leave a few messages, tell me where in the world you are so that I know that we are connected internationally. There we are. I can see you all joining now. Good evening, everybody, on this beautiful spring day. My name is Ms. Sharina Balaratnam. I'm the founder and medical director of the Aesthetic Clinic here in Beaconsfield and Buckinghamshire. I'm seeing the hearts now. Good evening, Joe. Good evening, Saima. Great to see all the team there and everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. I'm so excited today because I have the opportunity to interview Patrick Johnson, CEO and founder of our amazing Saluma LED device. Patrick is based all the way in California. That's where our devices are from. Good evening, Viv, and he's going to be joining us any second. Hello, Sandra. I hope you're well. And I have a fantastic audience that's joining us right now. They're really dynamic and I'm going to wait for Patrick to come in a second. But for those of you, thank you, Zyma. Thank you, Amy. Um, I hope you're all getting excited out there. I have the team, Paul. Hello, everyone from Saluma here in the UK as well. Everyone's joining in to listen to Patrick Johnson, CEO and inventor of the Saluma device. And Patrick is here. Here we go, everybody. To live. Patrick should be joining us in just a second. Patrick, good Hi, evening. How are you? Good evening, Patrick. I'm really well. All the better for seeing you. How are you? Well, you made my day. <laughs> you made mine. Yes. Well, what time is it there, Patrick? Um, it's 10 in the morning. 10 in the morning. So it's a good morning to you then. My Sal Saluma decaf this morning. <laughs> well, I'll do. A, I'm having a, a non-alcoholic tonic at the moment, so it's a little bit too early for that. Lovely oh, to see you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. lovely to see you, Patrick, and thank you thank ever you. so much for joining me today. I have to say, you have a big audience out there. You have a fan club. There's a lot of hearts. There's a lot of positivity and enthusiasm that I can see, and a lot of comments. <laughs> So we're going to have a great session, but I would love to say thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we've had the opportunity to meet already like this. We must stop yeah. meeting like this. We're going to have to meet in real time one day. It sounds like the prime minister has a plan for that. And yes. we, you know, I have to admit, London has become our second home. And we were so accustomed to being in London, you know, four or five times a year. And as you know, we have offices just outside of London. And it's, it's, I really enjoy spending time in London. And so I, I'm, I, I need to get a London fix. So we're, we're looking forward to being over there soon. Wonderful. Well, when you, when you come over for your London fix, we will kidnap you over to Beaconsfield just for a little detour. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Patrick, look, thank you so much for joining us and joining me today. I'm very grateful because um, when we first met um, like this, I had the opportunity of having your Saluma device at the practice for only just a few weeks. I brought in your technology on the 12th of November. And when it arrived, I was still very new. So when I first met you on the 27th of November, I'd been using it for a few weeks. So when I interviewed you then, you shed so much light into how the technology worked, how I could use it with my patients and benefit from it. And now on the other end of the spectrum, we're three months into it. And I know that my patients and team and myself and my dog, all very, very delighted with the results. Absolutely, Absolutely delighted. But really what drew me to your technology, Patrick, because this is very unique. You are the CEO and you are the inventor of your product. And our patients and audience are very lucky to have you today. Um, but what drew me to your product was back in 2019 when Saluma won uh, Product Innovation of the Year at the 2019 Aesthetic Awards. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's, it's one of our biggest days in the 10-year in the history of the company. And I, I think it, you know, we, we spent a lot of time 
developing the technology and introducing the, the, the technology into the US market before we brought it to the UK. And, um, you know, it was, we, we were actually nominated for the 2018 awards and we'd only been in the UK for about three months at that point. And so to, to win Innovative Product of the Year, you know, only, you know, 15 months after being in the UK market just was a, a, a tremendous experience for the entire company um, and, and really speaks to um, the power of, of the Saluma and excuse the pun, um, you know, to, to be, you know, put up against all of the products, not just the other light therapy product products in in the UK market, but all of the medical aesthetic products and be voted by a board of, you know, board certified plastic surgeons to be uh, product innovation award. It's it just it's it's it, it was a complete honor. And I know that uh, Denise and Paul enjoyed the evening. Unfortunately, I was back here in California having our Christmas party. So we had to sort of divide and conquer. Absolutely. Well, look, you know, you, you certainly have divided and you've conquered the UK and it's, it's proving to um, drive our results. Our patients are delighted with it. So going back to you, you mentioned that this has been a, a work in progress for over 10 years now. But before we touch on that, Patrick, would you mind sharing with us a bit about yourself, Patrick? You know, where you come from, how you came to produce a piece of top technology as, as revolutionary as Saluma. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yes, it's it's uh, it's a long, strange road, but um, I, I've I've been in you know manufacturing my entire professional career, and I've been in medical device manufacturing for more than twenty years, and um, about ten years ago, um, I was the um, executive officer of a publicly traded company in the orthopedic segment of the medical device industry here in the US. And, um, you know, I, I was living the American dream. I had the, the big house with the big view and the big cars um, and the big title and, you know, kind of everything that goes with it. <laughs> and I came to the conclusion that I was really unhappy. Um, and so I, I went looking for a nugget to build a company round as sort of the capstone to my professional career. Um, and I stumbled after about a year of looking um, into the, the, the body of clinical literature on low-level light therapy and, and came to it very skeptically. Um, you know, come on, use a light to like heal the body. Who are you kidding? Um, you know, late, late night television commercials. Um, but I was, as I, as I delved into the clinical literature, I was struck by two things. One, the breadth and depth and rigor of the clinical literature on low-level light therapy and the, the well-respected institutions that that research was coming out of. And was taken aback by the fact that it had never really been commercialized well. Um, it was very expensive. And so, so there was a limited access to the therapeutic benefits of low level light therapy. And for me, that seemed like a strategic opportunity. If yes. we could figure out how to bring, you know, efficaciously the therapeutic benefits affordably to the masses, it would be uh, a job well done. And so that's really what we set out to do. And fortunately for us, rather than you know, sort of inventing a technology and then finding, finding the science to support it. We, we went to the science and said, what's the best science we can design this product around? And, um, and so, you know, it, it isn't a coincidence that the Saloma um, reads on all of the best science in low-low light therapy because, you know, we, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel when it came to the clinical aspects, we, we just wanted to sort of perfect and optimize the form factor of the device so that it could be used by a lot more people, um, both in a clinical environment as well as at home. 
And that's very, very unusual to have something now that you can have both in a clinical practice and at home. Uh, it, it really is a, a game changer, Patrick. You know, 15 years ago, when I was doing my master's in surgical science at the University College in London, it was all about PDT, photodynamic therapy to treat skin cancers. And, and you know the technologies back then. You had to be in a chamber or it had to be applied on your skin. And it's something that you certainly couldn't have at home. And those technologies was, were certainly not affordable to the masses. It was very, right. very specialized. So to be able to have something like, like this that I can have in the comfort of my own home. <laughs> Look, there it is. There it is. This, this is mine, you know. Look, and look at I love the lights. It's, it's just beautiful lights, beautiful technology. So, you know, thank you for giving me something that I loved learning about 15 years ago. Little did I know I was going to have one in the comfort of my own home. So thank you and congratulations. And it's when it comes to... Say that again? It's been our pleasure. It's been your pleasure. Thank you. You talked to them about um, the amount of rigorous clinical data, the amount of research that is done. And a lot of my partner suppliers out there will know that um, I'm very fanatic about the data, the science, et cetera, before I introduce anything into the clinic for our patients. And what really drew me was the amount of science and study that had gone into your product. So what we'd love to know now that we know a little bit about you is we'd love to know how, um, how this product came about really. Can you tell us a little bit about the early science behind LED in general? Yeah, so, um, you know, if you go back to the very beginnings, the, the clinical literature in low level light therapy started with oncologists in Eastern Europe and them wondering whether or not um, doses of low, light, low level light therapy as opposed to high intensity um, light energy would do anything to tumors. And so they did a, a famous rat study mm -hmm. where they implanted tumors in rats and, um, and then half of the rats got treated with light therapy and half didn't. And um, probably much to the chagrin of the investigators, there was no effect on the tumor. However, the researchers observed that on the rats that were, uh, that were treated with the low-level light therapy, the incisions healed faster and the hair grew back faster. Yes. And so they knew something metabolically was going on. And um, it was actually Tina Caro's original work where she speculated that what was going on was the upregulation of the mitochondrial process. And so, everybody sort of jumped on that assumption and brought lots of di devices to the market. And um, when we designed the Saluma, despite the fact that we could get FDA clearances for it on a substantial equivalency basis, or basically claiming that it did what the other light therapy devices did on the market, um, that wasn't good enough for me. I, I wanted to know that the Saluma really worked. Um, clinically. And so um, we're fortunate to be five miles down the road from one of the two prestigious um, light energy um, research institutes in the United States, the Beckman Laser Institute at the University of California, Irvine, um, the other one being the Wilman Institute at um, Harvard. And um, we got the folks interested at the Beckman Laser Institute to, to research the Saluma and to compare it to low-level lasers. And um, we, in fact, um, and it's, it's pretty seminal research in that it, it, it confirmed Tina Caro's original assumption that it was the upregulation of the mitochondrial process. And so we actually demonstrated that. Um, a young um, graduate, uh, PhD student, uh, Dr. Ryan Spittler, now at Stanford University, um, he figured out a, uh, a way to actually turn on and off the mitochondrial process using light therapy and then um, a known COX inhibitor. And so it was, I mean, it was very, very cool that it was, you know, not only did we want to build the saloon on the, on the, on the top of the best science, but we actually then went back and confirmed that the device was practicing the science and that we could definitively 
explain the mechanism of action for the first time. And that's that's very special. Where you you wanted to know what your end outcome was going to be, and so you made the device to to hit that target, deliver the results. And you're all about the results. You were going to be unsatisfied until you actually got the job done and could prove that your technology worked. Right. Well, and and you know, one again, one of the goals was making the technology affordably accessible. And and you know, when we looked at you know. Up to fifty thousand dollar cold lasers at the time, you know. Our challenge was, well, could we could we make you know a thousand dollar device that provided the equivalent clinical outcome, but would make it much more affordable to to the masses, whether it was in a clinical environment or at home. Um, I mentioned the Wellman Institute, um, Michael Hamlin,、um, yes, a very distinguished Brit. And、yeah. researcher at Harvard,、um, in 2012, he he wrote essentially a compendium on on low level light therapy, and and the closing remark was that someday、um, most homes would have a light energy device, most likely an LED device um, that um, would treat, you know. Muscle, skin, and joint conditions, and even being being able to be used, you know, sort of over the the brain, and and so really, what we wanted we wanted Saluma to be the device that Michael Hamlin was talking about in his research, the the device that could be in every home, but is still a serious, you know, class two A medical device in in the UK、um, that that's based on you know robust clinical research. And、yes. provides predictable clinical outcomes. Yes, and you know, Patrick, when you talk about predictable clinical outcomes, I'm just reading some of the messages coming live through here, where、uh, Saima has said, "Saluma equals full body, whole whole body, whole family, accessible for all." And Talula has said out there, "Saluma has made my acne clear extremely well!" Exclamation. Somebody else, Cheryl. Results backed by science. So there's everybody out there all over the world getting clinically、uh, reproducible results with your device, and you can see that it's fantastic. And now that we actually understand a little bit more from you about LED and how it works and upregulating the mitochondria,、um, I know that in my technology I've got three wavelengths here that are that are within my technology that you can see on your device just right there. Would you mind sharing with us and for our audience out there what those three wavelengths are, or talk about a little bit about the electromagnetic spectrum? I know you can give a lecture on this, Patrick. Yeah. So, wavelength determines depth of penetration. The longer the wavelength, the deeper、um, the light energy penetrates within a very、uh, definitive range of depth, and so.、Um, We use three different wavelengths of light、um, in the Saluma: blue, red, and near infrared. Now, as I said, the fundamental mechanism of action of low-level light therapy is the upregulation of the mitochondrial process. But in the case of blue light, which is very shallow penetrating, we actually use that to create phototoxic events in P. acne bacteria. Um, exposing P. acne bacteria to blue light、uh, releases porphyrins in the bacteria. Those rupture the, mem- the the cell membrane, and essentially the bacteria commit suicide. And in the absence of that bacteria, you can't have P. acne bacteria、uh, or P. acne.、Um, um, red and near infrared. And so that's why there's a there's an association between blue light and 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 acne. Yes. There's something magical there. It's because it's a short wavelength and it's you know it it's shallow penetrating, and so we're targeting the depth of the condition we're treating with the blue light. The red light penetrates between two and eight millimeters below the surface of the skin, essentially where all the fibroblast cells are. And what we know about the fibroblast cells. Are is that they produce collagen and elastin, something that diminishes over our lifetimes, and as a result, we get fine lines and wrinkles in our skin. 
And so we're able to turn back on the production of collagen elastins by the fibroblast cells by exposing them to light energy. And, and then near infrared, deep penetrating as much as 25 millimeters below the surface of the skin, and sort of the consensus in the clinical literature, you'll find some outlying papers that says it's deeper. Um, but it's essentially uh, reaching down into the subcutaneous tissue, knocking down inflammation, knocking down um, uh, muscle spasm, increase, increasing local circulation, delivering more oxygen and nutrients to the tissue. So yes. really the, the, the aches and pains program. And so we've sort of blended those three wavelengths together like a fine wine, depending upon the depth of the condition we're treating um, in order to get an optimal clinical outcome. So, you know, we sometimes get the question of like acne and red light. Well, how come, how come you're doing that? Like nobody treats acne with red light. It's like, Yes, you're kind of right, because all they're doing is treating the source of future breakouts, but not doing anything about the existing lesions. Yes. So we want to knock down the inflammatory process, increase the exchange of fluids to and away from the existing lesions. And we're doing that with red light and a little near infrared. So again, we've done all the heavy lifting when it comes to figuring out how much and what light energy treats the condition. And, and so all you have to do is select the condition you're treating and hit start. It's as simple as that. You explained that very, very clearly, the differences between the three wavelengths that you mentioned, the red, the blue, and the near infrared. And coming to, to more of the science and the robust data, your technology, the Sluma, it has nine FDA clearances. And that's not one of the many things that drew me towards it. You have six for pain management and three for aesthetics. And it's usual to find data behind the aesthetic side for acne and breakout, sebum regulation, uh, inflammation, redness, you know, things like that. Um, but it's very unusual to see such robust clinical data for pain management. Do you mind, do you mind expanding a little bit on that one, please, Patrick? Yeah, and wound healing. Um, and wound healing, absolutely. Wound healing. It, because it's it's... You know, wound healing, actually, we're, we're um, conducting a wound healing study. There, there are, we were the first LED device in the EU and UK to be medically CE marked for dermal wound healing. And um, w our expectation is the same thing is going to be true in the US, where currently there are no other LED devices FDA cleared for treating dermal wound healing. But we've got a, the, a study going on again down at the School of Dermatology at the University of California, Irvine, um, where we're gonna be able to take everything that we've seen with the device in wound healing in Europe and combine it with a clinical study here and be able to get that indication here. So that'll be our 10th our indication. And actually upstream of that, we already have, um, or actually this week we'll have another uh, indication for use request into the FDA. So very soon it may be 11 indications for use. Right. But sorry, I got off on wound healing. Um, nope, that's okay. This is exciting. Congratulations. Well, the, great, the great thing is, is that, you know, we're, we're, we're very uh, pedantic when it comes to uh, reg regulatory compliance. And we can't talk about wound healing in the United States because we don't have that clearance, but we've got it in the UK and the EU. So you know, we can have these conversations and I can tell you all of all the cool stuff about wound healing, how Saluma works with it and how it works with it, increasing cell proliferation, cell migration to close, slow and non-healing wounds. Yes. I can't talk to a U.S. audience about that yet. I never knew that. I never knew that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All we can do is we can educate. We can talk about the, the, the general clinical science um, and um, but you know, we can't, we can't make any representations about the Saluma yet, but hopefully that's not too often in the future. But your question was about pain management, sorry. That's okay. Um, you know, and, and a lot of that has to do with um, the, the, the releasing of nitric oxide in the, in the bloodstream and, and, the, and the, um, the beneficial uh, therapeutic effects that uh, that has. And as I mentioned earlier, 
you know, one of the one of the key clinical benefits of low level light therapy is increasing microcirculation. Um, you know, thereby delivering more um, uh, nutrients and oxygen to the tissue to help tissue heal, um, knocking down muscle spasms. We know that um, muscles fundamentally need calcium to contract and ATP to release. And if what we're doing is um, increasing ATP per production, um, we're actually getting muscles in spasm to release. Yes. Um, we have lots of um, uh, uh, pain management specialists who will use the saloon as a diagnostic to, to understand what muscles are sort of stuck on and how to shut them off. Right. Um, so, you know, and so between, you know, knocking down muscle spasm, increasing uh, NO levels in the blood, which we know in moderation is a good thing. It can be mm -hmm. too much. Um, and, um, you know, and knocking down muscle spasm, the Saluma is a great pain management tool, you know, and, and there's good clinical research that low level light therapy, um, you know, produces both angiogenesis and neurogenesis. And so where we have conditions um, where um, uh, I lost my thought. <laughs> I, I can take over, actually. Okay. You, were you were talking about muscle spasms and how people um, in the musculoskeletal world use this for diagnostics. But, you know, I'm going to tell you another practical indication clinically why I introduced it into the clinic back in November. So we were in a, a global pandemic in 2020, as you know, and we were doing, I was doing a lot of this um, tele telemedicine, telecommunications. So a lot of my practice actually made me more sedentary than I ever have been in my life. I'm normally up and down and all over my practice. And when I listened to more and more patients in their Zooms, a lot of more patients were becoming more sedentary in their lifestyles and their, and their workplace as well, Zooming morning, afternoons and evenings. And at the end of the day, they're then having to stretch and becoming more stiff. We were also seeing more patients with um, uh, interscapular discomfort, lower back pain discomfort. And I would speak to a lot of my female patients and they would obviously be struggling with Zoom face and Zoom eyes because we're seeing ourselves more every single day. And I've never, used, I've never been used to seeing my face like this my entire life. And, <laughs> and, but I realized more and more patients were telling me that. And I tell you what, now that we're in 2021, January, everyone's exhausted. So, you know, periorbital aging is one of the top indications that I'm hearing from Zoom, lower back discomfort, and I can used to feel it in my patients when I used to be able to touch them in their backs, yeah. et cetera. So hereby led to me bringing in Sluma into my practice as well. I needed to deliver better quality results, faster quality results from redness, inflammation, disrupted skin barriers. I also needed to deliver better quality results from acne and maskne as well, because the pustules our patients were getting, they were very different to before, and they were lasting longer. They were, they were deeper in nature as well. And I had previous LED devices, which were also fantastic, but I realized with a higher performance patient with a higher performance problem, I needed a higher performance technology. And I believe it's your two to, to 10 joules per centimeter squared uh, amount of energy that gets delivered in a pulsed mechanism as well. That's very unusual to you, Patrick, isn't it? It's, yeah. And, and, and if I can use that as a segue, because what distracted me was a question that came up on the screen about fluence. Yes. Or the absolutely. amount of energy delivered. I'd and love to that answer that. When we designed the Saluma, we sort of elected to take a different path up the LED mountain. And prior to us, I mean, there were the, you know, the, the, the granddaddy of LED companies is a, is a UK company based in Birmingham on the Lux. Yes. Um, they were the first company to have an FDA cleared um, LED device. Um, and, and pretty much everyone that came after them just copied them and claim their science. And many of those devices are still in the market today, um, claiming that, you know, they're, they're the most clinically proven. Well, it's, it, it, it wasn't through their efforts, it was through someone else's. Um, 
But the sort of aha moment for me in designing the Saluma was given my background in orthopedics, um, post-op in orthopedics, we use thermal devices, um, both warm and cold devices that wrap closely to the area of treatment for managing um, wound healing and pain. And just intuitively given that experience, I thought, well, shouldn't an LED do the same thing? I mean, an LED device, because everything on, that ma on the market at that point were rigid pan arrays of LEDs. They, they look like a chip warmer here in the United States. Um, and, and it just, it didn't make sense to me. So it turns out my intuition was supported by the laws of optical physics, which tell us that as you move the emission of light energy away from a surface of absorption, the amount of energy available for absorption goes down dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in a paradigm that existed before biophotos where, you know, power was good, more power was better, um, you know, and, and everybody wanted to have the most power, it, it's really a misnomer because it's not about power, it's about energy. Energy. Power times time available for absorption by the body. And that's, that's a function of more than anything, how close the energy is emitted to the surface of the skin. So, you know, you'll have old school LED folks who'll say, well, it's nowhere near as powerful as the device that's, you know, that's been in my office for 10 years. And it's like, you're absolutely correct. But, but you paid 35,000 quid for that device and it does nothing more than the Saluma and probably less because it's designed to be positioned four inches from the way, away from the skin Whereas the saloon is designed to be admitting the light energy right at the surface of the skin, because as you point out, to upregulate ATP effectively, you need to be delivering between two and 10 joules per centimeter squared. I, it's just what the science tells us. So it's not about power, okay? It's not about power. It's how much energy is available for the absorption by the body, and that's a function of how much, you know, how close you're delivering the energy, not the power that's coming out of the device. So long way around explaining why I got distracted. <laughs> but thank you for the question. That was, you know, was a little outside pitch. I, and it's, it's over the fence, folks. No, this is good. This is good. There's so many questions there. And I think you covered a lot of that, really, Patrick. You've talked about the energy. You've talked about the fluence. I have a, a, a wonderful person here who said, I have been using this to cure capsular contracture after breast surgery, reduced my pain in 80% after two weeks. Now, I just want to talk about that, Patrick, because obviously that covers a number of things. That covers the pain management side of things that covers the wound healing side of things and also we're talking about scarring as well because scarring eventually causes um, tethering of the tissue and then there's also that um, patient confidence and the comfort that comes with that too so there are so many things uh, thank you so much for that patient for sharing with us that comes from the technology so it really is not just for facial aesthetics we're using it for the whole body the whole family and pretty much post-surgical pre-surgical because it really upregulates every cell that you, that it comes into contact with. Is that correct? Well, yeah, any cell that is mitochondrial compromised. Mitochondrial compromised, yes. And so if, if it's not, it doesn't do anything. Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it, it just, it sort of flashed into my head. Um, you know, LED is all about fibroblast cells behaving badly. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and what we do, because you know, if, if you have an injury and you don't have the benefit of light therapy, you have, you know, the possibility of a proliferation of myofibroblast cells that create scarring rather than sort of the natural collagen knitting of the tissue following an injury. And that's, that, that's sort of the one-two punch of light therapy is not only does it turn back on normal function of the fibroblast cells and the production of collagen for, for that knitting of the tissue, but it also 
as demonstrated in the clinical, clinical literature, it, it minimizes the production of myofibroblast cells. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a, it, it's a traumatic injury or surgical injury um, to, to the dermal tissue, we want to get light therapy on it as quickly as possible because one, we will accelerate the healing of the wound and two, we will minimize the scarring. Yes. So that leads me to my next point. Now, there, there are a number of practitioners out here that are asking a whole bunch of questions. So I'm going to try and cover some of these, Patrick. But adding, uh, just following on from your point where you can use it after procedures. So I would have a, a laser device in my practice. We also carry out microneedling and uh, treatments like that. So could you say that Sluma fits in very nicely following those type of treatments? And will we expect to get better quality results? ultimately. Yeah, you know, to a great degree in medical aesthetics, we insult tissue in order to elicit a healing response on the part of the body. Yes. Um, he says, not being a doctor. Um, the problem is, is that we also trigger an inflammatory response, the body's natural protection mechanism against future injury or further injury. And so we really end up working at cross purposes. I mean, and to the degree where I, I've talked to clinicians here in the United States that says, oh yeah, I've got, I've, I've got you know, I really turned up that inflammation. I'm, I'm where I want to be. And it's like, no, nah, no, nah, not really. You know, yeah, the body's working on healing itself, but you've also turned on a process that's retarding the healing. So the one-two punch of LED is one, knock down the inflammatory process, and then two, vitalize cells so they can get back to normal and in fact, accelerated healing. Mm. Um, so to the degree that you are insulting tissue, uh, you know, in, with any kind of a procedure, it is natural to follow with LED. In fact, um, you know, uh, Lance Setterfield, who is at least the guru in the US for microneedling, he essentially says, to paraphrase him, um, if you're going to microneedle, follow it with LED. And if you're not going to follow it with LED, don't microneedle because you're creating too much inflammation, um, you know, and potential scarring of the tissue. And, you know, why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. um, so, so Saluma is the perfect match for any um, insulting procedure and, in fact, um, sort of on the orthopedic side of things, um, you want to be using it pre-op because you want to be vitalizing the tissue as much as possible before it gets that surgical insult. Yes. And then immediately follow as soon as you can get the saluma back on clean, dry skin. So, you know, as soon as you can get access to the sutures, get the saluma on it and it will accelerate the healing and it will minimize the scarring. You've explained that really nicely, and there's, there's at least two or three things that I'd like to touch on and expand from that, Patrick. So the first thing I want to touch on is the, because somebody has asked a question here about it, um, about the panel being flexible and, and what I call shape taking, really. So I just want to, for whoever who has asked that question, that is a brilliant question. And I'm just going to show you how shape taking it is. Um, for those of you who may not have seen that out there. So, Patrick, I just want you to explain how important it is to get close to the skin and that whole inverse square law of potential. Because when I first had it, I probably didn't appreciate how close I needed to get in. So it was probably about four inches off my face. And I thought, oh, isn't this lovely? But now I'm literally wrapped underneath Wrapping. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I think that's a great distinction. The, the difference between flexible and shape taking Mm -hmm. There, there are other products on the market who, who sort of describe themselves as flexible. Shape taking, however, means that the device is staying where you put it, which is really important when you want to be admitting the light energy as close to the surface of the skin as possible. You, you need to put the device in place and have it stay there. And the Saluma is the only device on the market in the world that does that because we have international patents on that very feature. And, and, and truly that was the aha moment was, wow, if we could come up with a flexible light array panel that actually stayed where you put it, you wouldn't have to generate as much power with the device 
and therefore you could make the device a lot more affordable. And so, you know, as you've discovered, you, you want to wrap the Saluma as close to the surface of the skin as possible because you're getting the optimal dose. Um, and then there's a, sort of the flip side of that of, yes, Patrick, we understand all of that. That's very cute, but I have my big powerful device and I'm just going to position it at three inches away from the skin and I'll get the same dose of energy delivered. Yes, you're right. But if for some reason you position that device two inches away from the skin, you're gonna be delivering too much energy and you're potentially gonna be damaging tissue. You're gonna be creating phototoxic events. And so we've really optimized the output of the Saluma to provide a effective dose delivery of light energy without the potential of damaging the tissue. So when you position it as close to the skin as possible, and not only can you wrap it around the face, but you can, you can do a face, neck, and decollete. Yes. And it forms very nicely to all of those areas, which in the light therapy world would traditionally be you know, three different treatments, just like that. Um, I've, been and, I've been practicing, Patrick. <laughs> yes, you have. That's, 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 that's actually really good. Thank you. You know, so it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's simple. It's elegant. You know, we just, you know, all of us came from different segments of the medical device industry. So none of us were predisposed to that paradigm that existed before the Saloma. And so we came with a much more open mind about well, how do you effectively deliver light therapy and do it at the lowest possible cost? Taking me to the next question now. So we talked about wound healing, we talked about scarring, and there's a few questions uh, about this now. When it comes to, well, actually, I'm gonna talk about wrinkle reduction, because that's a, the latest question. When I use my Saluma, Patrick, could you explain to the audience why it's not necessary for me to wear my goggles on? I'm very comfortable under the light. Uh, but would yep. you mind explaining to the audience why it is safe for us to not need the light, as well as some of the wrinkle reduction um, results that you've seen as a consequence, as a positive yeah. So there are international safety standards for light emission. And when you look at those standards, the amount of energy produced by the Saluma is orders of magnitude below those limits. And again, it's another one of the benefits of taking the road we took was, you know, that um, you could then treat over eyes unprotected. Now, there are folks out there who have uh, light eyes and very fair skin, and we might find them wearing sunglasses inside during the winter, those folks are going to be sensitive to a Saluma treatment. And so that's why goggles come with the Saluma. But, um, you know, in the tens of thousands of demonstrations I've done at trade shows over the last eight years, it is the rare bird that I can't get comfortable without goggles. Um, if you let yourself adjust to the light energy, um, you know, you close your eyes, but the light energy is still going through your, your eyelids, but we also want to be treating the eyelids, don't we? Yes. Um, and, and so, you know, if you give yourself uh, uh, 30 seconds or so to mm -hmm. adjust to it, um, you'll be just fine. And more likely than not, you will find that your patients fall asleep. Like because we, because, like because, because low, low level light therapy, um, trigger serotonin production, happy hormones. And yes. so, you know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's not an FDA indicated use, but it is great at producing relaxation because of what we know low level light therapy does with regard to brain chemistry. And, and you're absolutely right. There, there is a lot of relaxation that needs to happen in this, this, this day as well. A lot of patients are um, at home working very hard currently and uh, not sleeping very well. I in particular just love being awake and I love thinking and I love planning ahead. So, you know, it takes a lot for me to go to sleep. So when I wrap this around my head, it gives me the opportunity to close my eyes and I'm asleep in four minutes, Patrick. Um, yeah. So it's very much a feel good. It's very interesting, the whole family, whole body concept, because a number of patients um, currently um, benefit from our treatments and 
and our treatments are working for their families at home as well. Um, in terms of pain management, the husbands are using it, wrapping it around their knees, especially if they're going running in this beautiful weather. Um, a lot of patients are using it for their lower back discomfort. And then also uh, a number of, of us are also using it for our pets. Now we talk about wound healing. You talked about uh, accelerated wound healing where the fur is also managing. And on that note, somebody wants to say hello, Patrick. <laughs> Hang on a second. So this is a special someone that you help get better. Oh, because goodness. Spartacus would love to say hello to you. Spartacus, okay. I am Spartacus. And this is his scar, Patrick. Yeah. He's, he's completely healed up. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. My, my daughter, uh, since we're exchanging dog stories, my daughter has a Chawini, um, which is the most ADD dog in the world. It, it, it's, it's wound up on something and it had to have spinal surgery. And, um, and we were going, well, you know, if you can, if you can get them to settle down and stay under the saloon, it'd be really good for them. And the little dog just would get under there and take a nap. And that's really been our experience with most animals. They seem attracted to things that are good for them, and therefore they seem attracted to light therapy. Yes. And so, you know, we, we have numerous studies of people using the saluma over their face and their cat trying to crawl in with them. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's, you know, uh, domesticated animals to the degree that they're mammals, they're, they're, you know, biology works the same ways as ours. And so, you know, whether it's hip dysplasia in your Labrador or, you know, some sort of a chewing wound, get that saluma out. Get that saluma out. And leading me to the next question, Patrick, is, is too much ever enough? Can we overcharge our skin? And can we overcharge the batteries in our skin? I remember you saying to me one time, or maybe you were presenting, it is physically impossible to overcharge your mobile phone. Does that, does that analogy yeah. apply to the skin? Yeah, absolutely. That's the perfect analogy is, and it goes back to what I said, you know, low level flight therapy re-regulates compromised mitochondrial process. If, if the cells are not mitochondrial compromised, low level light therapy won't do anything to them. And so what we know from the clinical literature is if you're using the device that it is emitting between or delivering between two and 10 joules per centimeter squared, um, over a 20 to 30 minute treatment time, you are going to produce upregulated cellular activity for up to 48 hours. Okay, I know that was a lot of variables in that equation, but, um, you know, and then beyond that, nothing, because it's just like the battery in your phone. You know, when you plug your phone in uh, at night, it's fully charged in the first two hours, and then it's sitting there waiting for you to use it. Yes. The cells are the same way. You know, they're only capable of absorbing so much energy until you start consuming the energy again. And so that's why two things. One, um, you know, 30-minute treatment. That's a function of how much energy our device delivers. And every other day or every 48 hours or so, because that's how long it will take the, the, the body to burn off all of that energy delivery. Now, I, I saw a question come up. Someone said, yeah, but you know, what about devices that um, you know, produce more power, um, uh, less treatment time, right? And it's like, yeah, not really. They're, they're, the, the law of reciprocity does apply to light therapy, but again, within a really defined range, because you know the point I made earlier was, it is possible with a high powered device to trigger oxidative events in the tissue, delivering too much energy, you know? Um, and so we wanna be careful about that. And so, Fortunately, we've done, designed the Saluma so it can't do that. So to answer your question, with regards to the Saluma, you could wrap it around your body and run it 24 hours a day and there would be no detrimental effect. Okay. Um, other than what your friends might think about you. <laughs> 
I won't tell them, but I think the whole world knows knows by now what I'm getting up to every night, which yeah. um, brings me to the next point then. Uh, Patrick, so this is clearly a, a device. I have the Saluma Pro 3 in clinic and one at home for myself, and I have to steal it off Spartacus, obviously, now. But in terms of the, the full body panel, is that something that I can use on top of my body every day, for example? I had a few colleagues ask me that. Yeah, I, so I, again, the thing to recognize is that our full body Saluma Deluxes are in performance and technical characteristics identical to the Saluma Pro. Okay. And so, you know, unless you had some sort of trauma that resulted in a lot of tissue involvement, you know, using the, the Saluma Doc Deluxe more than every other day is probably not going to have any incremental benefit. Right. I said that if you were in a car accident where you were rear-ended at 40 miles an hour um, and your whole body is sort of suffering, um, using it more than that um, could very well produce extra benefit. And the thing is, is given that there's no harm, yes. why not? Why not? I mean, if you're not doing anything. Why not be, be using the Saluma? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a huge amount of sense. And Patrick, I, do you know we've been speaking for almost an hour, so I just have a few more questions that a number of patients have also asked me. In terms of, okay, another, one of the many reasons I brought it in was um, it's shape taking, it can be used for the full face, I could extend it to the neck in our patients as well. Um, but obviously we were in a pandemic then and we'd come out of it and I wanted to treat our patients safely. And I love the evolution of your devices because you then produced hygienic barriers during that time. Do you mind just sharing with our patients and our audience the hygienic barriers and um, how that came about and does it influence or affect the, the amount of energy delivered to the skin? Yeah, so again, the Saluma is the only LED device on the market that has disposable hygienic barriers. And, um, you know, we often get asked questions, well, can I just wrap it with saran wrap? And it's like, yes. no, you, because we, we went to great lengths to find a material, a poly material that would have no impact on the optics of the device. And so, you know, one of the things that we did trying to help our professional practitioners when the whole COVID thing came up was we were giving away, we, we gave away pallets of hygienic barriers, um, you know, just just as sort of belt and suspenders, you know, you want to wipe the Saluma down with a low alcohol, non bleach surface dis disinfectant. Um, but you know, just to, to offer a little more confidence to your patient, put put on the hygienic barrier, throw it away, you know, and in in you know non COVID times. You know, if you're ever using the Saluma in a part of a patient's body where your next patient wouldn't want to think about that, the hygienic barriers are perfect. I think that's really reassuring for, you know, a practitioner as well as a patient. We are hopefully going to be coming into an out of lockdown and we'll be back seeing our patients again because we still remain closed. And I look forward to them feeling so assured that they get to feel safe and protected whilst having their treatments and getting some fabulous regenerative results. I just have a couple more questions here. One of them was actually from Cheryl, who's uh, our nurse at the practice, and it's with regards to using Saluma post-microneedling. Would you use it immediately post-treatment, Patrick? Immediately post-treatment. Yeah, I, I, again, if you have a dermal injury, the sooner you can get the Saluma on the skin, the better. Yes because it's going to knock down the inflammatory process faster and it's going to prevent the production of myofibroblast cells. So okay. yeah, immediately. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we have a couple of micro needling companies here in the United States who at trade shows will immediately send the, the, the attendees that they've treated over to the Saluma booth. So we'll do a Saluma treatment on them so that they'll be more impressed with the results right. of the micro the micro needling treatment so absolutely immediately immediately on i hope that helps cheryl and i had another patient actually send me this earlier today and uh, a number of my patients at the practice are having a scalp treatment to help with increasing in thickness luminous luminosity and just hair growth follicular growth and this is one for you for the future 
can my device be used for the scalp? Stay tuned. Um, we, we, um, I, I can tell you that there is good clinical literature on re, sort of revitalizing follicle health. Um, if the follicle's gone, there's nothing we can do. But if the follicle is there and it's just underperforming, resulting in a thinning of the hair, um, then low-level light therapy is effective. Um, there is not currently a LED device only um, device on the market, FDA cleared, or as far as we know, medically CE marked for uh, hair rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. um, but our expectation is there will be soon. Understood. I, I will watch this space then, Patrick. Well, look, time has flown. And once again, we're at the end of an hour. I could talk to you all day, Patrick, but on that <laughs> note, I really could actually. And I know my team there are thinking, oh my goodness, they cannot wait to meet you and Denise and all of your team. Um, but, you know, any last comments uh, as we finish? Anything you'd like to share with, with our audience? You know, I think the great thing is, and I, I watched the tour of your facility a couple weeks ago, and, and I'm just amazed at how you have integrated technology, including the Saluma, into your practice. So, you know, if we're, you know, ever going to hold someone out as a practitioner who has sort of embraced the Saluma mindset, it's your practice. Um, I mean, whether it's, you know, offering standalone light therapy treatments or adjunctive treatments with things you're already offering, or even reselling the product to your patients for use in between visits. I mean, you sort of per personify um, what it is to be a Saluma practitioner. So well done. Thanks for making us look good. <laughs> It's my honor. Honestly, I'm, I'm humbled by what you've just said. And we cannot wait to show you around the practice. I think it's very easy when um, I love the science and I love the tech. You know, there's no better time to be in the aesthetic space as a patient and a practitioner. And uh, the science is compelling. My team will tell you we're so fascinated and driven and probably obsessed about our results. Results that we can see, treat, uh, track and measure with our Vizia and Vectra and all these imaging technologies we have. And, uh, and our patients love it in clinic and at home. So Patrick, on that note, thank you so much to you, Denise, all of your team over there. It's been wonderful. I really appreciate your time today. And uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of our audience out there. And if you've got any questions, just email the clinic and we'd be absolutely delighted. Patrick, stay well and we'll see you in England and back thank in the field. Look forward to it. Best to Spartacus. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Cheers. He says bye -bye. best to you too. Okay.